Bring it on in, everybody. Bring it on in. Bring it on in. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Let's start getting some people up in here. Let's get some people up in here. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning. Yeah, that's that Dion in the background, y'all. That's that D Weezy. Today, but when did yesterday was Wednesday? Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Come on in, y'all. Come on in. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. We're trying to get some more people up in here. Good morning. Good morning. Before we get started, good morning, Joy. Hit the share button. Let's get these hoodlums and hoodlums and heathens inside the building. <laughs> good morning. Good morning, everybody. I see y'all tuning in. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see some familiar faces again. We on. Go on. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Bring it on in. Bring it on in. Good morning. Well, we're going to get this thing started. I ain't waiting too much longer. I'm already behind. Good morning, good morning, good morning. What's going on, everybody? Welcome in, welcome on in. I'm going to turn myself up just a little bit more because, yeah, y'all don't be telling me if I'm loud or low, and I'm just going to take that risk this morning. Good morning, y'all. Good morning. So for all the new faces I'm seeing, y'all know, well, for all y'all that don't know, this is how we normally get down. So I start a phrase and you end it. We are always in control of our day. So if I say, I am on your end, you're going to audibly say whatever you need for the day. So if I say, I am on my side, you say strong courageous happy grateful whatever you feel as though you need for the day correct so with that being said let's get started i am i will be i am hoping for i will have i am looking forward to i am leaving I am receiving. And lastly, I am. Once again, good morning, everybody. Good morning. I'm glad to see some familiar faces in the building. I'm glad that everybody got it going and is still keeping it going. Shout out to everybody that's tuning in. Good morning to everybody that's still plopping on in. And today, 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 today is one of those days to where we're going to just let it flow. We're going to just let it flow. I had a few topics uh, I kind of want to talk about. I want to dive into colors with you guys today and, and certain things about dreams and stuff like that good morning Cree. nice to see you in here uh and uh dreams and stuff like that but i feel as though we need to dive into um physical spiritual and mental health today you know but that kind of shifted when i woke up this morning and i was talking with amber this morning and i just felt led to like really kind of shift what i was talking about this morning you know and like really give people a better insight or a better sense of familiarity with these concepts so I guess we can say um, we can start off by let's start off with, with spiritual, right? Well, no, actually, let's start off with physical before we even dive into spiritual. So when it comes down to physical well-being, I'm not even really going to base it around fitness. I'm not going to base it around working out or anything like that. It's more so more so taking care of yourself. You know, it's it may seem simple. It may seem like an everyday routine. It may seem like, well, I, oh, I, I put lotion on in the morning and I do this, that and the third but realizing that is something that is a necessity forming routines and forming physical habits that not only alleviate you from day to day but keep you in the mindset in the mood in the modes of being progressive or whatever's going to set you forward in life or what's going to set you forward for your day you know so self-care goes a lot deeper than just oh me getting massages or you know me going taking myself out for a treat or something like that or going to a restaurant what's going on maria i didn't even see you up here good morning nice to see you i hope you're doing well and i hope you're safe um but yeah it's a lot deeper than that you know it's like 
making sure that you're not ashy, even though we joke about stuff like that, but you know, moisturizing your skin, because whenever you're ashy, you tend to have a whole bunch of friction on your body. You know, you're more susceptible for cuts. You're more susceptible for damage and friction and stuff like that, both inside and out. You know, so keeping your skin moisturized, keeping your hair moisturized, making sure you're presenting yourself a certain type of way and not like you have to be clean, cut and pristine every day, but at least giving yourself some TLC, giving your hair some TLC. You know, it, it, it plays a big role in your not only your mentality, but the way you see yourself and your perception of yourself whenever you take care of yourself. You know, and then that gives you a contrast to where you can identify when you are not in the healthiest of places because you notice where your routine's been off. Oh, I ain't really been combing my hair. I ain't really been taking showers. I ain't really been doing this, that, and the third. That's some indicators that you can eventually adapt into your system whenever you form a good, healthy relationship, physical relationship with yourself. You know, making sure you're drinking water. When soon as you wake up in the morning, and I'm guilty for not doing it every morning because I'm I'm just an on the go type of person. You know, um, I still haven't drunk no water today, and and I don't plan on eating today at all. This is my Wednesday fast, but like I, you know, I should have drunk water when I woke up, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, like making sure that you drink water to hydrate your system and making sure that everything works. Like we talked about on a few live streams ago, you know, just swishing water in your mouth when you first wake up brightens your eyes. You know, it makes you, it helps you with the clarity, it helps with you seeing things, your depth perception and your clarity on life and your, the definition on life through your eyes. You know, so making sure your organs are activated and certain organs don't really activate or have a hard time activating whenever you don't drink water, whenever you barely have any water in your system, you know, so show yourself some love, show yourself some tenderness, like nurture yourself. It's okay to pamper yourself, you know, form a routine that shows yourself how to take care of you because you can't expect good morning. You can't expect um anybody else to really pamper you or you can't expect to show somebody what you feel as though you need to feel better or to feel cared for or nurtured if you don't know how to do it for yourself. You know, it's a really difficult task to do. But um, making sure you're putting some food in your system, your daily bread, you know, like making sure that you're watching what you're eating. And like for, it may sound crazy, but like like write down how you feel after you eat certain things, you know, like or how much of certain things that you eat. So I'm going to drink water right now, <laughs> as you should. Um, But, yeah, be mindful of those things, because you'll be surprised how many foods are linked or what type of foods that you eat that are linked to serotonin release inside of your body. You know, you'll eat certain, like for me, I I know for a fact if I'm eating apples, if I'm eating like, well, fruits in general, if I eat fruits and stuff, like I start getting dancey, you know, I start feeling good because it's just something about the natural sugars that's inside of fruits that really agree and sit well with my stomach. Now, when it comes down to like me eating beef or me eating like uh, other forms of like steak or something like that, I can't really eat meat too heavily like that. And I'm, I mean, I can, but I'd rather not because I start feeling bloated. I feel tight. I feel tense. You know, I feel sluggish. You know, I, I, my mood changes, but, you know, our bodies digest things differently. You know, even your blood type has a lot to do with that. You know, being aware of your blood type. I'm uh, a B. So I can I think I can yeah, I can give to everybody. But I can, oh, what, what is a B is. No, I can receive from everybody. I think I don't remember what it is. I'm one of them. I'm one of them new universal. I forgot. I remembered it like a few weeks ago, but I ain't really been reading no blood. I've been reading on other things. So my brain is not in blood world. But um. Yeah, it's like certain blood types can only digest uh, certain types of food as well, too. I, there's a book called Eating Right for Your Blood Type. And even though, you know, some people are going to go against it because, you know, ultimately you have people these days that's feeling as though veganism is the 100 percent way to go with your digestive system. And is that in the third? And I'm not. Look, I'm one of those people to where it's like, I don't know if I'll ever fully go vegan. If I do, cool. If I don't, it's whatever. But I'm an 80, 20 person, but I'm also a do what you can for yourself person and what works best for you, because with the way evolution has been going on, you know, I'm not saying we we are anatomically structured to capture, kill and cure meat for ourselves, you know, and to digest it so frequently. But I mean, some people's bodies and, and bloodlines have adjusted to where they can eat a bunch of meat and don't feel no type of way. Me, no, like fruits, vegetables. Well, 80 percent fruits and vegetables with 20 percent meat and I'm balanced. You know, but that also, like I said, that goes back into the physical care and the physical side of it, because I'm making sure I'm taking time to really, um, you know, do something that makes me feel good, do something that makes me feel nurtured and makes me puts me in the right state of mind. You know, for me, it may sound silly, but like, you know, it for all y'all that know it, like it, it used to take me a while to grow facial hair, you know, and then like even when I got into like my mid 20s, you know, it took me a while to start growing facial hair. But like now that it's actually growing, you know, like one of my biggest nightly routines that I love doing, you know, is oiling it and brushing it because it makes me feel 
not pampered in a sense, but it makes me feel structured. It makes me feel like I accomplished something. It makes me feel, it makes it makes me stick out my chest a little bit more. You know, it's something I'm proud of. You know, even though like my girlfriend like to say she like wears a mad time before you shave it off. You know, you like shaving it off. So that's just that's just that. But you know, that's on the physical side of um of your health, right? So let's move on to the um emotional side before we hit up the spiritual side. Making sure that you talk to yourself. You know, like talk to yourself with love, talk to yourself with peace, talk to yourself with positivity and talk to yourself out loud, because the more it may sound crazy, but, you know, support yourself emotionally. You need you need vindication and you need support, at least from yourself before you try to find it in anything else. But whether it be a person, place, thing, at least confide in yourself and know how to bring peace, joy and happiness to yourself by talking to yourself. Wake up and look yourself in the mirror. You'll be surprised what it'll do for you. It may be weird and uncomfortable at first because you've never done it before. I mean, not everybody's comfortable with something new, whether it be good or bad for them. But make sure you're looking at yourself in the mirror and you're going, well, I'm proud of you. You know, things may be up and down right now, but like you haven't quit. Like really talk to yourself as though you're talking to yourself, not like, oh, I'm this, that and the third. And you're just being all skeptical about it. You know how you feel about your life right now. You know how you want your life to go and you know what type of person that you are. You know, acknowledge the fact that you're conquering your demons, that you're conquering your bad sides and your ugly sides. Acknowledge the fact that you're putting time into yourself and that you are getting some form of gratification for it. Acknowledge the fact that you work hard and you know you work hard and you know you're sacrificing, even though you really don't. What's going on, Chris? Glad to see you up in here. Um, And you know you don't necessarily um do it easily, but you're getting it done. You know, so it's it's OK. And it's I actually implore you guys to start like really talking to yourself and encouraging yourself, giving yourself gratification, giving you giving yourself satisfaction, you know, like really making sure that you're taking care of yourself, because if not who I mean, how can you either teach somebody to help you do that or expect that from somebody else? And you really don't know how to do it to yourself. You know, so moving on to the third thing, let's talk about uh, spiritual health and making sure that we're taking care of ourselves on a day to day basic uh, day to day basis spiritually. You know, are you praying? Are you meditating? Are you doing your affirmations? Are you really re- like what one thing I really like to do? And it keeps me so in tune with like my my, my I, like you said, the childhood self is like as you're either writing down something that you're praying for or hoping for or as you're really meditating or praying about it. Really try to visualize it. Close your eyes and really try to visualize it because it's something about once you have a visual representation of what you want and you can create that image. You don't need anything else around you to create the image that you've made within yourself of what you want, who you want to be, how you want to be, how you want to live. It's powerful because once you get that and you created that and you got that from within, nothing can strip that or alter that from you externally. That is, you know, so make sure that you're taking the time to learn how to eat. And it, it could be hard. Some people just don't have ima- imagination. Some people don't know how to walk in that realm of their mental state. But practice. Even look, if you don't know, if you can't envision yourself in the in the type of happiness that you want, the house that you want, is that in the third, just start envisioning yourself in certain clothes. Like just envision you in a white t-shirt. Envision you envision yourself in a blue shirt, you know, like in some in some shorts. So what's going on, Kevin? Good morning. I didn't even know you was in here. Um and like some shorts, like just something, a simple outfit, something. But practice visualizing yourself how you want to see yourself, you know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be, quote unquote, realistic. You know, some people see themselves as these these great big like I'm big into anime. So like, hey, well, good morning, Keely. So um, imagine some people imagine themselves as like like, you know, like anime characters, like big, strong, you know, powerful aura flying off of them and stuff like that. And if that's who you are to yourself or the visualization you create that you're aspiring to. It can manifest in so many different positive ways inside of your life, you know, and when it comes down to the prayer, the good morning, Kaylee, um, whenever it comes down to the prayer side, make sure that you're, con- it, I feel like when it comes down to the spiritual prayer and stuff like that, it's more so the consistency and the principles of it and the discipline of it, because anybody can have a good or bad day and then run to it and I uh, use it when it's convenient. But the real power in it is when you're consistent and when you keep doing it over and over again, even when you feel as though you don't need to, or even when you feel as though, um, you, you're, you do it enough or this, that, and the third. Always seek more when it comes down to the spiritual side of your life. Because one thing about the spiritual realm, it's not physical. It's endless. It's boundless. So it's like whenever you go to one level, nothing is literally stopping you but yourself and, you know, whatever forces that may be from getting to the next level. But it is possible. And the more you understand 
about spirituality and the spirit world and stuff like that, the more, as y'all know, I like to say, the more superpowers you can get, the more of your own superpowers you can unlock. You got people that have gotten so deep into synchronicity of their physical, emotional, and spiritual life all into one big circle to what people will dream it or they'll feel it or they'll start praying on it. Not even a week, it'll happen. You know, I'm starting to get, you know, uh, glimpses and like little experiences and moments of that. I still have other things in my practice I have to solidify that works for me. You know, as I say it for me, because everybody's thing is different, you know, but I'm noticing that my cycles and my routines and like how I practice to achieve the next level of spirituality, physicality, emotional support and all that type of stuff. The more in tune I get with that, the faster and the bigger things are starting to happen. Like I never plan on doing a live stream podcast like this almost every day, at least five to six days out of the week. But in my spiritual practice and my, you know, my meditation and stuff like that, the ideas started coming, the visualization started hitting. And at first it started off with me just playing and doing stuff like that. But then it, it had to transform the, the deeper I went, the more it transformed into something bigger. It transformed into something more so for the community and something that, cause as much as I'm giving to you guys, it has to hit me first, you know? And it's like, I love that, it's been it's been a real it's been a real journey for me for one, but two it's one of them things to where it's like it has been changing me as well, you know it's like I'm not just sitting here doing this just talking to people and you know trying to tell you guys how to live your life is that in the third it's like there's things that I'm practicing things that I'm reading about things that I you know I feel as though are being downloaded into me and I'm practicing myself I'm doing it myself I'm implementing it in my own life. And I'm seeing the changes, you know, I'm seeing the things happen. I'm seeing like the money coming out of nowhere, you know, the the ties that I don't need starting to fall off, you know, like the security, the protection, the peace. If, if I've gained anything from the three practices I just told you about, if I've gained if I've gained anything out of this whole practice, it's the peace of mind that I've been having and losing my sense of self in a sense. It's like I, I don't feel like all like any ego problems I had or any pompous behavior or any kind of cocky, arrogant type stuff that would kind of dwindle, you know, from just me being naturally competitive and naturally just like ready to go out and get it and win. You know, it's it dissipated. And now I'm in a place to where it's like I'm in a constant state of gratefulness because <clears throat> with gratefulness comes abundance. And when abundance comes gratefulness, if you if you know how to operate in it. And the more that you synchronize yourself into those, you know, those healthy circles within yourself, you just start to like prime example. Uh, I don't know if he's still in here. I can't tell. But Chris Jones, Chris Jones was is um, a great friend of mine. We met in college and he always wants to direct movies and be in, on a big comedy scene and do this, that and the third right out of college. Dude got a, a job at the same college he graduated from in cinematography. You know, and like he's he's he did. Uh, I remember Pearl Motel as one of his short films. He got out. Y'all go check him out on his website. Also, he's funny on TikTok. Y'all go check him out. on It's Chris Jones World um, on TikTok and Instagram is Chris Jones World. I believe he has the link inside of his bio. You can check Chris. If you if you still in here, please drop a link or drop something in the comment section for people to find you. But um, he's not only is he funny on TikTok, but like when you go look at his short films, you'll cry because dude knows how to really paint a picture you know and, and, and tell a story but i watch him practice and hone and go through his process and do this that and the third and go through life to get to where he is today and this is just the beginning you know like and there's a lot more people in here that i personally i can tell you guys about like me being of consultation to them or just being a friend and showing them these different practices and how to do this that and the third and how their lives are changing you know and none of us are perfect but we're we need each other you know, nobody can really go through life strictly on their own. That's not how humanity was designed. It can never function like that. But when you take the time, <clears throat> excuse me, when you take the time to really dive into yourself and you start spraying those good seeds and sowing those good seeds into others, you know, without expecting anything. That's the thing. If you're going to give, give to give. You know, it's like I'm not going to say, oh, give and don't expect anything back when it comes down to like investments and st stuff like that. That's cool. But when it comes down to people. You know, try your best to just give with an open heart and a good heart. If you feel led to give, give. If you don't feel led to give, don't. You know, discernment is key. But at the same time, it's like the things that you sow into others, it has to come back to you. The things that you sow into the world, it has to come back to you. It may not be the same way that you gave it, but it's going to come back to you. It has to come back to you. That's just how it works. You know, so make sure you're taking the time, like I said before, to merge the three circles. Make sure you're working on your physicality. Make sure you're working on your emotions. Make sure you're working on your spirituality. Because if I was to make like a little Venn diagram and put that, you know, the little interlapping parts where they have that one or a few things in common, 
it's all for your betterment. It's all for your good. It's all for your abundance. It's all for your gratefulness and progression forward. So if you don't take the time to really sit and dwell with yourself, and that's really all it is. It may sound deep. It may sound complicated, but it's getting to know yourself and creating a list or creating ob objectives that's going to help you not only better understand yourself, but move forward as the person you're trying to become. Because when you do those things and when you're serious about those things and when you really take the time to dwell and really just find your way through yourself, you'll discover that there's so many layers of you. There's so many pieces of you you haven't even found yet. And that's another thing. People's brains and people's ideologies change through the years. So you're going to be in a constant state of figuring yourself out and you're going to be in a constant state of evolution. But it can be the most beautiful thing or it can be the most nightmarish thing in your life, depending on what you decide to do with that information that you gain once you find yourself or somewhat somewhat start figuring yourself out and it's it's so fun y'all i'm telling y'all that that's the that's the thing about life you can you can be even that much more grateful for something whenever you didn't have it a year before or like if you didn't have it yesterday you know like there's certain people that are going through major depressions right now but and tomorrow, the next week, next month, next year, they're going to be walking in abundance of faithfulness, abundance of happiness and peace and stuff like that. And not even trying to go back to who they were before. But you, you have to keep moving forward. You have to keep trying to figure yourself out. You know, a lot of people have these thoughts, right? Have like these very malicious or just not them thoughts, right? And they shun it or they push it to the side or they don't deal with it rather than, whoa, I'm having this thought. Why am I having this thought? What is this thought? What does this thought make me feel and why? And then once you really start diving into that, diving into those pieces of yourself, you know, and then you start dealing with that. OK, I know this is wrong. I know this is not how I want to think. Excuse me. What should I fill myself up with that's going to help me not think like this or that's going to push me to think in a different way or a better way? What habits can I form on a day day to day basis that's going to get me from where I'm at physically to another state? You know, like for me, when it comes down to like my training and stuff like that, I know for a fact, if I was to put like a strong year into just bulking, 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 and then going to maintenance and really like want to lean out and stuff like that, I'll be huge. You know, I'll be what I want to be. And then I'll take the years moving forward to really sharpen it and stuff like that. It's not as easy as most people may make it seem, but like, you know, it takes time and stuff for like that. But the journey that I'm going on with my fitness and with my physicality is like a really go with the flow type thing. It's like make sure you're consistent and make sure you're you're tracking what you eat and you're working out and you add intensity and, you know, you're recovering properly and stuff like that. But I'm not in a state of rushing. I'm not in the state of doing everything I know how to do to get the instant gratification or the instant muscles or the instant size. Yeah, I have my ups and downs. I have my jealousy moments of whenever I see other people, you know, especially the, the bigger people that start off with a bunch of mass and then they shred down and come down. You know, it's like I have my moments, but at the same time, it's like I understand that that's my human. That's my human. That's my humanity. That's that's my uh, my nature sometimes or our nature sometimes. And it's OK. You know, just don't let that overtake you, you know, like and, and take that as fuel. It's OK. I'm, I'm feeling this type of way towards this. But how can I make that my motivation? How can I make that my fuel? How can I put that inside of my life and propel me forward? You know, because one of my biggest uh, kind of apprehensions right now is like I'm walking into something that's very, very new, a new way of life that I never really lived like this before. I never really thought like this before. And or at least to this capacity, this level, you know, and. I'm I'm big on wasting time. I'm real big on making sure my time is well spent and making sure I'm moving forward at any chance possible. But I'm in such a new just trusting in God and like seeing what my daily missions are type of field to where it's like my work has to speak for itself more than my advertisements do, you know. And then on top of that, it's one of the things to where it's like whatever he decides to drop down is what I'm going to get. Not to say that, oh, well, well, you know, I'm not working and blah, 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 blah. Is that in the third and I'm just waiting on him? No, I'm still doing my due diligence, but I'm I'm learning to let go and really tap into my spiritual side as far as my deeper calling, my deeper missions, my deeper objectives, my deeper everything. You know, because the more you really take time to figure out what's really best for you, get the wants out of the way and really start focusing on what you need. And what you need to do to grow as a person, as a spiritual being and all this other type of stuff, life changes like life does a 180 sometimes, you know, and that's OK, because we need that. Sometimes we need something new. Sometimes we need something that's uncomfortable. Sometimes we need something that's going to require a dip. Not that you, you're lessening the amount of effort that you're putting in, 
but it's a different type of effort. It's a different type of focus. It's a different type of dedication. You know, now you're learning to deal with certain emotions or certain point of views that you didn't really li didn't really realize that you had. That's me right now. You know, it's like I'm, I'm going through these emotions and these perspectives and I'm trying to really figure it out without stressing myself about it because I can stress myself out a lot. You know, that's one thing I'm so grateful for when it comes down to Amber is like she can see when I got too many hats on and she can reel me back in. You know, or she can really tell me like, hey, you need to focus on this or like, hey, don't be so hard on yourself about certain things, you know, relax. But in my brain, I'd be doing 10,000 things at one time and moving at a thousand miles per hour. So it's hard. But, you know, I'm appreciative to say the, to say the least, you know, I'm, I'm really appreciative to have and grateful to have the person that I have in my life and the things that I have going for me right now. So, like, I feel as though all of you guys watching and listening right now can have that and more if you decide to let go while being focused while while tapping in and analyzing what's going on around you like i said before being vigilant you know making sure you're being aware of your surroundings both on the physical and spiritual side of life and the emotional side because your emotions can creep up on you but at the same time you know you you have a bit of control you have a bit of self-awareness and you have a bit of say so in the matter so if you do use it you know and if you know how use it because at the end of the day you know, we're, we're all in the, in the same game, bro. No matter how you want to put it, like we're all in the same video game. Maybe we got different quests. We have different missions. We have different power ups. We have different items. We all have different superpowers, but we're all in the same game, you know? So sometimes you need to cut the game off, blow the cartridge, put it back in old school style, cut it back in, cut it back on and reset it. You know, like let's, let's go back from the auto save. Let's go back from the last mission we saved and really dig back in and try to and tap back into life, you know, because man, it's so beautiful, bro life is so beautiful right now and like y'all know me i'm i don't like the cold i don't like the winter and stuff like that it's such a doomy and gloomy type time even though we've got thanksgiving and christmas all of that it's like i just don't like the cold but for some reason this cold season is different you know i'm a lot happier than i normally am i'm a lot more grateful you know things like my days are a lot better my emotions are a lot stable a lot more stable you know and, and it's just uh it's because i'm taking the steps to be different for myself and I'm looking inside of myself and I'm really pushing to be a better version of myself and to be a stronger version of myself. I know what I want out of life. I know and I expect certain things out of life. But, you know, what I've been doing so far has only been getting me so far. So it is only wise of me to really look for something deeper and look for something different while still staying my course. Because the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over and over and over again and expect a different result. Why do that? When I still have time, uh, and granted, anybody can do it. I'm not saying that because I'm young, but you got older people that can do it too. Um, I still have time to be different. I still have time to find another outlook. I still have time to really get things going. I still, I still have time to be patient. And I feel as though, like, especially as young people, we want to get it now. You know, it's like we want to get it now to where we ain't got to worry about it later, this, that, and the third. Just be patient, bro. Your journey is your journey. Your process is your process. You know, not everybody, if we're just going to be real about it, not everybody meant to be a millionaire. Not everybody built for that life. Not everybody built, have that mental, that mental state to carry that, that type of cash, that type of power that it brings, that type of influence, you know, that type of lifestyle. Now, are you destined to be broke? That's not what I'm saying. But, you know, just be real with yourself and accept yourself for who you are, you know, and like make sure, because in my opinion, I feel as though money, money is an amplifier. So whoever you are upon receiving, let's say millions of dollars, is that in the third, it's just going to amplify whenever you get it. If you're a person that sucks with money and you can't really keep money, you don't know how to save, you don't know how to invest, you don't know how to do this, that, and the third. When you get a bunch of money, guess what? It's not going to last you because you don't know what to do with it. If you're a person that um, indulges like just too much, you know, you have all of these problems with not knowing what when's enough, when enough is enough, and this, that, and the third. You having money just gives you more possibilities, which gives you more options and gives you more opportunities to indulge, to overdo it. You know, if you're a person that's depressed and you get a whole bunch of money, that money ain't going to make you happy. It's not. You, it's just not. It's not going to make you happy. So, like, that's why I say continue to work on yourself, continue to, to thrive and to find different perspectives of life and build yourself. Because when those things come and your destiny comes and you start walking in it a lot more than you were before, at least you have a, a tool set to get you through the door cracks in your life, the broken floors in your life, the the needing to mount a TV in your life, you know, the fixing the sink, the pipe, a uh, need the sink in your life, you know, fixing the stove. Because at the end of the day, we all need the tools to get through whatever we're going through. 
Nobody's going through exactly the same thing, but we're all going through something, whether it be big or small. And whether it be something small to us is big to somebody else and vice versa. You know, so it's it's okay to dive into yourself, get these tools, get these practices, get what you need in order to move forward in life. Because the moment you stop or the moment you start going backwards, that's a problem. That's a big problem. Now, I understand going inward to build outward. I get that. Sometimes you got to step inside and pause to grab. But that's still a form of moving forward because you're grabbing and fixing things that's halting you rather than dwelling and just being there. There's a difference because people think just because, oh, well, I'm thinking about what happened. I'm trying to process these emotions and blah, 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 blah. I'm moving forward. Dwelling and actually trying to fix what you feel is two different type of things, because if you find yourself going back to these memories, going back to these past whatever's. And it keeps it's, it's as though it's a sense of torment. You're just dwelling. But if you're going back and then you're like, OK, this is how I felt. How do I move forward from this? OK, how do I mark this? What do I need to learn from this? What is the symbolism behind this? You know, that's moving forward to where whenever you eventually start thinking about those things again, you know, you just you it, it doesn't hurt as much. You know, you're not really stuck in that moment of time anymore. You know, like for me, one of my biggest overall emotional things I've been having to get through and going into the next year, I'm, I feel like I'm somewhat over it, but I still got to well, not over it, but like, you know, coping better with it is grief, you know, the loss of my grandmother. And initially I was in this emotional paradox because it's like, I don't know how to feel. I feel sad. I feel heavy, but I don't know how to feel. I, every time I go back, because I mean, I was there when it well, the majority of the family, hey, Destiny, majority of the family was there when it happened. You know, like I'm not going to go too much to detail, you know, about it, but it was it was something to see, you know, and it's like for that to be some of my last memories with her, you know, and for that to be to to couple that with like, you know, certain talks I was having with her before that going to her house, you know, like watching her go through life and stuff like that. The memories would haunt me, you know, and like I was talking with my girlfriend about it. It was like I felt kind of responsible, even though I wasn't the cause. I felt kind of responsible because, you know, I look at myself as this holistic coach and this, that and the third. And I was like, well, well I didn't go to her sooner. You know, I didn't I didn't get to her on time, but people going to do what they want to do. And life happens. You know, so it's like, I'm just glad I had to change that mindset of, well, I should have got to her sooner and I'm a, it's some of my fault and this, that, and the third. And so I'm thankful that I took the time whenever God told me to go to her house and spend, like, I would go there just to go see her, just to go bring flowers. But it would turn into like, like two, three hour conversations, you know, just spending, spending time over there with it. And I'm grateful that I was doing that because when the dark times come or the grief likes to come back, I can parry that or I can counter that. What my new mecha me ah, mechanism is in those situations is to think about all the good times. Think about you know the last bit of meaning, the last meaning of uh, meaningful conversations I had with her. You know, I have these pictures in my phone of like the family and like one of my favorite pictures is like is a picture of her and as a uh, recline. It's a lazy boy she used to have, and like I was like tucked underneath her and stuff like that. And it, it's one of my favorite memories to have, man. But is getting through it is is not easy. You know, it, it's not easy at all. And I'm not a person that, man, I hate funerals. I hate funerals. I hate death. I hate all that type of stuff. I don't. The only reason why I went to my grandmother's funeral is because I'm her grandson. And I was one of the people that had to help with the casket. But if I have, if typically if it's somebody that I know or some, you know, or such and such that we're going to the funeral. Y'all got that? I just, it's just the feeling. It's like I'm, I'm too in tune with my emotions on that side. So it's like, it's not just a feeling that comes over me. It's a tangible experience that I have to go through every time. You know, regardless of the person, that just feels a certain type of way to me. So, you know, when I would battle these, these, and then that's the thing I suppressed. I suppressed so much when my grandmother had passed. I had wrecked my car. Um, I, I was like, I was being careless with my money. It was like, I was just all over the place, but I wasn't dealing with my emotions properly. You know, I was going through all of these things, suppressing, and oh, I got it, I'm good, and just randomly break down crying. crying randomly find myself in like emotional tantrums like just not just going through the motions you know but like once I really found what worked for me to get not really past it but to cope with it because I never want to forget her you know my grandmother is the reason why and one of the, the the biggest motivating forces still to this day of why I am who I am you know a lot I talked about it a few live streams ago about the plan I have for my family and she was a major part of that you know but it's like I had to learn how to live with my new reality that I'm not getting these random phone calls from her anymore, that I'm not getting these random text messages or Facebook messages that, you know, 
like is it she's so silly man because like my uh my mom and what well, i mean honestly all my mom and her siblings but you know i relate more to my mom because that's my mom it's like i love the similarity and the nuances that my mom still has in her pe- personality that my grandmother had what's going on lamarcus um that my um grandmother had so like it kind of brings me joy too to like i've been going to my mom and them house a lot more they move but I, i've been going to the house a lot more often and um it's the little things she say and do that remind me of her. you know and it's like just finding the light in every chance i can when those memories pop up rather than how i was doing a few months ago i just go cold you know i'd be sad but i had to once again physically emotionally and spiritually I had to retune myself i had to reharmonize with myself i had to like grow through certain things to get to that that point in life you know and, and you know they got some people up in here you know you may be losing a grand uh, any family member. you may be losing a family member. you may have lost one recently or whatever go through your cycles go through your cycles It's i know it may seem heavy it could seem hard it could be something that that's really just seems very impossible to do in the moment and but you have to embrace those emotions and let it out don't do what i did don't suppress don't wait don't try to be Mr. Macho and, oh, I got it together and I'm trying to be there for everybody else. And then whenever your day come, you are breaking down. You know, let that stuff out. Process. Be real with your emotions. Well, whatever you feeling about that. And also, if that person is still alive, man, you know how people are like, oh, well, you waited till last minute to spend time. Go spend time with that person. You know, especially if they have like a little bit of fleeting life left. Because people, you know, they even though they're crossing over to the other side, that's a memory. That's a moment. You know, like, like go spend some time, you know, go be there, you know, go, go show your face, you know, regardless of what people may think or regardless of what you may think of yourself. You know, that may be the time you can mend a relationship before it ends, you know, that you can go be by this person's side one last time or like really dwell. You know what I'm saying? Like life is too short, bro. Life is too short to be sitting there holding grudges, this, that, and the third. It may be a family member that you don't even like. Go, go deal with that. Go deal with that. You know, like, especially if that person is passing, go deal with that. Because you don't, why would you want your last last tie with that person before they die is to be, you know, like something of anguish or grief. I mean, not grief, or uh, uh, just, just gr- being disgruntled with each other and like be having beef. You know, not, not granted, it's different. I'm not about to sit there and go, I mean, it's not crazy, but I'm not about to sit there and go make peace with an enemy. You know, somebody that tried to kill me and stuff like that. But you know what I'm talking about, like the little petty things, you know, like the, with your cousins, friends or whoever, the little petty things, go hash that out. If you know they pass and are they on their way out. You know, go go show them some love. Go be there. Go be supportive. Because at the end of the day, like for my grandmother, for example, we lost the matriarch. That was the matriarch of the family. You know, that was the glue. Things, man, things have changed since she has passed. But I, what I also love about my family is that they're trying to recreate the glue. They're trying to recreate, you know, the, the bonds and like the moments and all that type of stuff for a family. So it's like, you know. You pro- process death how you process it, but at the same time, be real about it, you know, and be real about your life and be real about the things that's going on around you and create that that harmonious circle of the three elements that we talked about earlier today. Like, make sure that you're taking the time to fine tune yourself, to fine tune your life, you know, the, the people around you, you know, let go who you need to let go, embrace who you need to embrace, whether that being another person or yourself. You know, like there's many facets of ourselves as humans that we really need to get a hold of and we really need to time for the patriarch you're leading already i received that bro um it, it's one of the, it's one of the moments to where it's one of them levels to where it's like you have there's so many levels of you you know what i'm saying so it's like it's okay to rediscover yourself it's okay to just find a new you or a better version of you because we are supposed to rise from our ashes we are supposed to let the old things die and create and rebirth something new you know let life happen let life go on but be real be real about about life to yourself be real about life to others and be real about everything that's going on around you you know because if you don't you got to deal with that or it's going it's going to manifest in some way you really don't need it to or want it to but that is my time it is 901 i know normally we stay at about 9 30 but i feel like I feel like that's the only thing I'm really led to talk to about you uh, with and for you guys today. So any questions, any topics you guys want me to talk about later on or tomorrow, let me know. I'm available for it, but I want I want you guys. I don't know. I just feel it's feel different today. I just want you guys to know. I don't know who it's for, but like, like really love yourself. Start learning to love yourself again. All those broken pieces, all those ugly pieces, all those things that you, you know, you're masking away from others and yourself and the things that you're even trying to hide from yourself. Uh, like pieces of you from yourself let it go bro
Like really start diving into who you are and embrace your ugly side and deal with it. You have to embrace it to deal with it. You have to acknowledge it to know how to move forward. Move forward. Let it go. Because on the other side of that process is what you need. Not what you want, but what you need. There's a lot of things that you need from season to season, from glory to glory, faith to faith. You know, so if you're not dealing with yourself, and if you're not dealing with the facets and the levels of yourself, then you're just going to go in circles and it, and it can get worse. But love yourself. It all starts with love. You know, everything stems from love and Un unconditional love towards yourself at that. Know that you're human and you mess up, but you love yourself through it all. And God loves you. You know, so we're going to end with our um, affirmations like we normally do. You guys can repeat after me. Uh, what's going on, Ms. Brandy? I am loved. I am felt. I am heard. I am understood. I care for myself. I am wise. I am growing. And I will continue forward. Peace and love. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Same time, 815. I love you all.